Hey, this is Professor S, and for the next five minutes or so, I want to talk to you about the different forms of active transport. Now, in this video, I'm not going to get into details about each one. I'm just going to introduce them collectively, and I'll be following this up with several other videos showing you the specifics of each type of active transport. And this video is a direct follow-up to my video on the difference between active and passive transport. I like that video. Yeah, you would like that video. Anyway, active transport, you want to recall, means that the substances being moved are moving against or up their concentration gradient and the cell is spending energy to make that happen. Let's go look at just a few illustrations of ways in which active transport occurs. Now a couple forms of active transport utilize integral membrane proteins like these two on either side of me. To my right is a pump protein. Uh, these are proteins that force substances through the membrane from low to high concentration uh, up their gradient utilizing cellular energy very often ATP. It, it's just like a, an electrical or mechanical water or air pump forces water and air from low to high pressure. These pumps force substances from low to high concentration. This particular one is a sodium potassium exchange pump and it's forcing sodium and potassium through the membrane against their gradients utilizing energy spent by ATP. Now when this pump is operating for the sake of its own operation, it's called primary active transport because the thing we're spending energy to directly move, sodium and potassium, is the thing we want to move. It's the first thing being moved. By contrast, this other protein to my left, which is a symport, doesn't directly utilize energy to move substances against the gradient. Instead, it utilizes energy stored in existing concentration gradients. This particular symport is going to force glucose through the membrane against its gradient using energy from a sodium gradient, a sodium gradient that the pump to my right is establishing. And so what that means is this pump spends ATP not necessarily to power itself, not just to move sodium, but it's powered to move glucose by another location, making this a form of secondary active transport. We're spending energy to move a substance at the second location. And if none of that made a whole lot of sense, accept that they're forms of active transport and trust that I have other videos coming. One five minute video on the sodium potassium exchange pump and two five minute videos on secondary active transport. Another set of active transport processes doesn't involve integral membrane proteins. Instead, it involves vesicles like the one over my shoulder. In these processes, which are collectively called vesicular transport or bulk transport, we're moving either very large quantities of substance, so not a few molecules or ions at a time, but a huge mass of them in one shove, or we're moving things that, at least to a cell, are very large, like organelles or even, let's say, a bacterial cell. When vesicles are involved, we're going to see them either fuse with the membrane to push their contents outward, like this, and that's called exocytosis, outward movement of the substance through the membrane against its gradient using a vesicle, or alternatively, a vesicle can be formed to pull objects into the cell like so, which is called endocytosis. Now, it actually turns out that there are three different versions of endocytosis, and just to go through the differences between those three is way more time than I can fit into this video, which is why I have another video coming on the different forms of endocytosis. But just to tie all this up right here, bulk movement of substances in or out of the cell against their gradient using vesicles is called exocytosis when substances are leaving the cell and endocytosis when they're entering the cell. So to wrap up, all forms of active transport involve the cell spending its own energy to move substances up or against their gradient. If that's done directly by a single pump protein for the sake of the pump's operation, that's called primary active transport. I'll be doing a follow-up video on the sodium potassium exchange pump. Secondary active transport takes one of those pump proteins and utilizes energy in the gradient that it creates to move substances through other proteins called symports and antiports. I'll be doing two videos on that subject. And then bulk movement into or out of the cell, large amounts of substance or large objects being moved through vesicles. Exocytosis is the outward movement. Endocytosis is the inward movement. And look for a five minute video on different forms of endocytosis.
filming, were you? No. Because that could have looked bad. We weren't filming. We're filming now? Yeah. We're ready? Okay. Yeah, we are. Okay. Hey, this is Professor S. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you found it helpful, here's a couple others you might also enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see all the new videos as I put them out. Thanks. You picked a good day to do that in one take. What?